please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome, I'm Kritika Saxena. I have with me today a very special guest, uh, Rajiv Suri, the President and CEO of Nokia, in his first ever television interaction. Thank you so much, Rajiv, for speaking to us. Uh, why haven't you given a television interaction yet since you come twice to India every year? <laughs> the first is always the best. I've been okay. waiting. Okay, I will take that as a compliment. <laughs> Rajiv, let me ask you about how critical is India for, for Nokia. Um, the perception about the brand Nokia has always been the smartphone, but in the last five years, the journey has completely shifted. You took over in 2014. Now, there, has, there is a lot that you have seen, changed, and done. What's the next step, and where does India fit into that strategy? So, before I go into how India fits into the strategy, perhaps it's worth yeah. talking just Absolutely. about our global transformation so we Absolutely. understand what is Nokia hmm. today. Hmm. So we have transformed quite a bit as a company. Well, first of all, we have a long history of transformation over the 150 yeah. years plus. I mean, from an entire consumer-led portfolio, you have shifted the game to enterprise, and, yeah. and the growth is showing, if I'm correct, in the last few years. Yeah, so in 2013, hmm. we, we had turned around Nokia Siemens Networks. Yes. That was our infrastructure, telecom infrastructure division. I was heading that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we then bought out Siemens, so we owned 100% yeah. of that. Yeah. We sold the devices business yes. to Microsoft, which is a deal that concluded in 2014, giving us a lot of cash as well. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we, we acquired Alcatel Lucent in 2016, yes. making us a far more broad-based, scale industry, end-to-end -end telecom networks player. Mm -hmm. And then we, we sold here, which was our mapping business, mm -hmm. essentially making us a B2B company by mm -hmm. offloading that business as well, again giving us a good chunk of cash. Mm -hmm. So now we are, based on last year's sales, something like 24 billion euro um, revenue yeah. telecom infrastructure company, mm -hmm. of which uh, mm -hmm. most of it is uh, B2B uh, operator driven, i.e. we serve communication mm -hmm. service providers, but also uh, the fastest growing business in Nokia is now the enterprise business, yeah. working with yeah. industrial verticals and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, other large companies. India has always been a key part of our strategy, mm -hmm. especially I, I'd say about 15 years ago, and I'm close to uh, mm -hmm. India in more ways than one because yeah. uh, at that point I was heading Asia Pacific, so India was part of my portfolio. So if you go back 15 years, mm -hmm. uh, our business here was tiny. Now we had yeah. 42 people here, just 42. Absolutely. We were number six. Yeah. And then we decided that we want to now make this a place where we become number one. Fast forward to 2007, we have mm. about 3,000 people. Mm. Our sales have grown roughly about fourfold from that time in about 10 years. Mm. We're now number one. Yeah. So naturally, we've had a fast mm. growth strategy uh, in India. Mm. And to me, India is one of the fastest developing uh, businesses we have. In fact, last year was the fastest growing country that mm. Nokia served. Mm. Uh, so it's always a key part of our strategy, and it is more than just serving the market. Yeah. We want to manufacture yeah. here, we want to do R&D here, and mm. a number of things. Okay, I want to go into those details, and I understand that you don't break out the revenue as per geography, but give me an idea. You said this is one of the fastest growing geographies. Uh, how has the growth been in terms of, you know, even the, in the immediate last three years, has it been, uh, has it crossed double digit? Uh, how consistent have the, has that growth been on a CAGR basis? Yeah, in uh, last year we were double digit growing in revenue terms uh, in India. Can you give me an idea, 20, 25% plus? Not as much, you know, think under 20, but under still 20. above 10. Above 10, okay. Uh, where is the growth right now coming from? And then we can talk about what lies ahead right now, specifically in India. Where, what are the growth drivers for you? For us, it was a, a lot of 4G, hmm. so 4G Absolutely. networks and yeah. growth. And you were one of the players to tap into the 4G uh, maximum in the last five years, if I'm correct. That's right, yeah. Hmm. Uh, we are, we again took market share globally in hmm. 4G last year. Hmm. Uh, we're very strong in 4G, naturally. So hmm. I'd say mobile and 4G. Hmm. But not just that, um, also enterprise, hmm. software. Remember, we have a business called Nokia Software. We sell hmm. software into our service provider customers, but also into the enterprise. Hmm. Um, and we're end-to-end, -end. so this is not just a mobile company like we used to be in 2014. Right. Yeah. So uh, transport equipment, uh, IP routing, hmm. uh, and every adjacency that goes with it. Uh, hmm. Making entries into you know, uh, cable providers like Tata Sky and, and so on, hmm. making entries into Tata Power. And hmm. so I'm talking about broad-scale enterprise as well. I think we, we moved into smart cities hmm. and, and so on. So 
basically mm. B2B in every possible dimension you mm. know, we could uh, extract. Mm. In terms of market share, how much more can you scale right now? There is uh, the 5G opportunity that is around the corner. Keeping that in mind, keeping the fact that, yes, India is one of the faster growing geographies, even in terms of you know basic projection on mobile infrastructure networks. Uh, um, we are, of course, not scaling next to China, but there has been the possibility of growth in the next few years. What is the opportunity there? Uh, I think 5G is a unique opportunity for Nokia hmm. because we are the only company Hmm. in the sector, in the telecom equipment hmm. uh, and infrastructure space hmm. that has an end-to-end -end portfolio. Yeah. Because 5G is very much about mm. re-architecting the network to become end-to-end. -end. It is mm. not just about the underlying radio technology. Absolutely. It, it is about mm. the whole infrastructure coming together. Mm. Um, and we're the only ones that operate at the full in infrastructure end-to-end -end mm. and that have a global operation in every mm. country, including US, Japan, South Korea, China, mm. you know, all these sort of technology lead markets, so to mm. speak. So for me, 5G is a great inflection point for us to take more share of wallet hmm. with our customers like Bharti, like Reliance, like hmm. Vodafone, Idea, and, and so on. Hmm. Um, and you know, the more end-to-end -end you are, hmm. the better total cost of ownership benefit you can give our customers. Mm -hmm. We reckon 30, 40% possibly. 30, 40%? Yeah, because okay. you know we, we save a lot of system integration effort that goes between mm. interoperating with various mm. players and, and so on. Mm. 5G also is, is, is more than radio, like I said. It's a move to the cloud. Yeah. It's a move to yeah. software-defined networking. Yeah. It means that our customers become mm. more like uh, cloud players, like web scale mm. providers, like mm. Amazon, Google, and so on. It provides them agility to provide new mm. services very quickly. It cuts mm. their cost. It does. So one is the TCO benefit. Mm. Second, if you're more end-to-end -end with a player like us, mm. as an operator, you will be able to do service introductions faster. Maybe you get an eight to 16 month Correct. time to market mm. advantage. And you'll get a lot better network reliability and more mm. security as well, five mm. to 10% better network reliability. Okay. So for me, 5G, is a great inflection point. It's hmm. also the beginning of a super cycle for the industry. Absolutely. And it will pull hmm. through a lot of other things okay. for us. So Rajiv, um, you have already said that, uh, you know, you've completely dismissed all the prediction that 2025 is when 5G is actually going to be embraced. You've said that by the end of this year to the beginning of next day, we're going to see the beginning of 5G play out, correct? Yeah. By when will it come to India? Given the fact that, you know, 3G, 4G uh, came five years to almost seven years later. Uh, are we prepared? That's another question, but why, when will it come to India? I, I'd say that uh, I've proudly dismissed the notion that it's 2025, and happily so, have, because yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm happy that it's coming quicker and it's mm. accelerating. So I'd say it starts with US this year, Correct. and I'm talking commercial, mm. commercial rollout of mm. real 5G new radio technology, mm. uh, and then will be China, mm. Japan, South Korea, Nordics, India will be I'd say 2020. 2020. 2020, which, mm. which is again a bit sooner than most would have expected. Absolutely. Now, what is 5G about? Mm. 5G is about three things. Mm. Capacity. Yeah. Per cell, it can give 20 times more capacity than 4G. Mm. In places like Mumbai, take South Mumbai, you can, you can mm. cater to 1,000 times more traffic, 1,000 mm. times more traffic in a place like this. We really need it in India. Mm. Um, the second part is latency, so this is responsiveness of the network. I press my Correct. smartphone, what hmm. time does it take to get a response? This is really key for industrial applications. Hmm. Hmm. Think factory automation, hmm. think remote virtual reality robotic surgery, think hmm. uh, 5G ambulance, for instance. Hmm. Uh, so this gives 100 times more reliability hmm. and 100 times more latency. So that's okay. the second, right? Hmm. And the third is speed. Yeah. So you can go up to well, you're getting to fixed line type mm. of speeds. Mm. You can go up to two gigabit per second already with 4G, but mm. you'll be able to go to five, five gigabit per second with, uh, with uh, 5G and maybe mm. even up to 20 Gbps. So mm. it's speed, okay. latency, capacity. Okay. If you think about India, hmm. capacity is now really needed because hmm. the data consumption is going through the roof. Hmm. And, and the price of consuming data is, is going down. Hmm. And so very good hmm. opportunity for 5G. Hmm. And hmm. then of course, we need speed. And uh, eventually, speed. industries mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. will also need that low latency, okay. 100 times no. Uh, okay.
Lord but yes. Rajiv, um, keeping the bottlenecks in mind, and I'm talking about bandwidth, um, the fact of the matter is uh, my call dropped uh, five times in the last 10 minutes. Um, I struggle with video calls every day, and that's just one person. Mm -hmm. This is this is the bandwidth issue is real. We haven't been able to successfully uh, holistically integrate 4G with our day-to-day -day systems. Um, how will we handle 5G in that case? I think you're right because uh, India has one of, one of the most loaded networks in the world. Absolutely. Hmm. And loaded networks come from the fact, um, you know, either the spectrum is not enough hmm. or simply the data consumption is, is much hmm. stronger and the number of sites might not be enough to cater to that demand. Yeah. So uh, clearly we've got some work to do, uh, hmm. but the underlying issue here is that we do need more spectrum, we do. Uh, especially when we, we do. start thinking about 5G. Hmm. We will need enough yeah. new spectrum in the hmm. right bands. Hmm. Now I think India is moving hmm. forward, fortunately, to consider the right bands. Hmm. So what we call 3.4 to 3.6 gigahertz, hmm. Uh, hmm. which is sort of the mid-band yeah. for 5G. Yeah. But we need to make sure that there's enough hmm. spectrum available hmm. per operator Correct. so that we can, we can roll hmm. this out uh, hmm. in a much more meaningful way without you having those drop calls. Will the new telecom policy help here? I believe yes. It, it potentially will. can. Hmm. So our role is to to help contribute hmm. from a technology hmm. evolution standpoint, Correct. to help explain what the best spectrum might be. And I think India would need hmm. mid-band spectrum, as I just said, but also hmm. what I call high band, ultra high hmm. band spectrum, millimeter wave spectrum, we call it. That spectrum hmm. allows for faster speeds. Yeah. The higher the frequency band, the higher the speeds. Hmm. The mid-band allows you yeah. broad coverage, yeah. so you yeah. can get national coverage. Hmm. And then you also need some low band, hmm. think about 700 megahertz and so on. So mm. for instance, in the US, they're doing 600 megahertz. Yeah. And the reason for that is mm. because that allows you to then do a lot of uh, IoT connectivity, Internet mm. of Things connectivity, which of mm. course is what 5G is Correct. all about. It's all about Correct. connecting things yeah. and people, not just people. Mm. But would you realistically agree that India isn't yet prepared? India isn't yet prepared? Isn't yet prepared. I think the drivers are there. Mm. Um, but it will take time. It will take a cohesive network of players like yourself, uh, mobile operators, handset makers, and the government, of course, coming together sure. to do that. Sure. Okay. But In it's more prepared than you might think. Really? Yeah, I think it's more prepared than you so, might so think. So where do we stand? Okay, let, let's talk about you know your plans when you look at your expansion. You know, even from the entire network perspective and the environment perspective, regulatory perspective, uh, <laughs> where do you think we okay. stand compared to the other emerging geographies? And I'm, I'm not counting China and Japan here. It's the strongest. If yeah. you're not counting China and Japan, it's mm. it's it's really the strongest among many of the other emerging geographies. Mm. Uh, it's uh, the data consumption. Mm. I mean, it's. I would predict that mm. India, mm. Uh, per user, mm. per month, mm. will become one of the top three consumers of data in mobile around the world. Around the world. Yeah. Okay. Today, Finland is the highest. Yeah. So typically, we use 18 gigabytes. Mm per user per month, hmm. and I think India will get there in good and quick short order. And you don't think that your regulatory uncertainties, delay in carrying out of policy is going to play spoil sport here? Does it concern you as an investor yourself? Regulatory is always going to be something that, that hmm. helps rather than becomes a burden. Hmm. Um, I actually think that you know with the hmm. new telecom policy, hmm. uh, with the focus on the right hmm. spectrum, I think hmm. we're on our way. We're more on yeah. our way here. I mean, I'll give you an example. U.S. does not have mid-band spectrum. India mm. is thinking about mid-band spectrum. Yeah. I love the 3.5 to 3.6 spectrum because mm. it is the first uh, globally used spectrum for 5G. Mm. Everybody's going to use it. Mm. The more you use it, the more scale you'll get on that. The more mm. the device devices will be at lower price points, the more the penetration will be, the mm. more equipment will be produced in that mm. price point, and the rest is history. So okay. I really mm. think that, uh, therefore, I, I think that I'm less worried about uh, India in terms of understanding what the mm. right spectrum is and, mm. and proceeding with that. Okay. We just have to make sure we have enough of it. Mm. We didn't have enough of it in previous generations of technology. Absolutely. So, so they are very loaded networks, and we need more of uh, spectrum in the right bands. Uh, I want to understand your R&D plans. I believe India is the second largest R&D center for Nokia. Bangalore is a huge center for us. Hmm. Has six thousand people, people overall yeah. R and D. So, so what's the kind of growth that would be required, given the amount of uh, investment and infrastructure growth that is required here? How much more can you scale up your R and D presence? Well, first of all, we we do all major things here. We do the cloud, okay. hmm. so the core networks, the cloud. Hmm. We do Internet of Things, five hmm. um, G. Yeah, we're doing R and D for five G here. From here, okay. from here, hmm. we. Uh, we have some usually disruptive 
mm. digital cloud solutions that we're doing from mm. here that serve the enterprise as well. So mm. overall, I mm. think we, uh, you know, it's a microcosm of what we do globally. So great work. Mm. And so we'll continue to scale in okay. terms of whatever the needs are. Hmm. So we do manufacturing here in Chennai hmm. as well. It's a hmm. world-class facility. Yeah, I actually wanted to understand about that. You know, in terms right. of uh, uh, making India, I have heard some talks from the government how Nokia is contributing. Hmm. But to help us understand how, from a making India perspective, what more is going to be done in terms of manufacturing over here? We have been manufacturing hmm. here since 2008. Yeah, it's a real high-tech facility. Absolutely, hmm. uh, and it's very complex. It's it's not like just producing mobile phones. It's far hmm. more complex. You know, RF and radio frequency tuning is very nuanced when it comes to manufacturing oh, yes. in base stations Absolutely. and all different kinds of frequency hmm. spectrum and variants and so on. It's pretty complex, and and they routinely win quality awards hmm. in in the company. Hmm. Uh, I think we have well over a thousand people doing manufacturing mm -hmm. uh, there. We are. Uh, How much more can you scale that? Uh, with the volume, we, we're, we're, we're mm. actually—it's not just for India, right? So it's yeah. it's uh, it's serving many mm. countries. I think mm. 30 countries. 50% mm -hmm. of it is exported. 50% mm. sale. You'll be surprised mm. to know that the new air scale 5G ready mm. base stations are being manufactured here as well. Okay. So we're doing that. Mm. So. It, it, I don't have hmm. accurate numbers in terms of how it will scale, but <laughs> both R&D will scale with hmm. success, and, and so will uh, manufacturing, manufacturing over time. W would you want to set up more plants based on the capacity? No, I think we have capacity in the same plant in that we will plant. just try to drive. It's such a good plant. We're okay. so happy with it. Uh, hmm. We just have to sort of, you know, expanding okay. based on, you hmm. know, number of equipment we can uh, come out with. I think we, in 2015, we hit the 2 million unit production mark. Okay. And in 2018, mm. we doubled that to 4 million. You doubled that. So you can see that. Hmm. How much more can you scale that uh, by 2020? Oh, it depends on how much 5G takes off. If 5G really takes off by 2020, mm. then you know, hopefully we'll continue that scaling. Right? Mm. I, I can't predict a number. Mm. I mean, I want to be surprised positively but, but, the but, number but, would be higher. But could you double that as well, given the kind of opportunity that you have? Potentially, 5G takes off. Because remember, mm. I'm, I'm, it's not just in India. It's also, yeah. it's also globally. If you look at brand Nokia from a, from a uh, consumer perspective, it's more attached to nostalgia. It's more at, than an active business proposition. Do you feel that that has led to brand Nokia, uh, the image of brand Nokia suffering in India, not being very clear over here? I think actually that uh, India is where our brand is probably loved the most. Hmm. Uh, and... Uh, HMD, have, have, mm. no, we as Nokia, in terms mm. of smartphones and yeah. overall feature phones, are, are doing yeah. very well. Mm. I mean, it was the first mm. year of operation for HMD Global last mm. year, if you think about it, right? Mm. And they said that it's 70 million phones. A large mm. part of it is still feature phones, but mm. also emerging very strongly in smartphones. Look at the number of phones we, mm. uh, we launched mm. during uh, both last year and, and 16. So, and you, mm. th the fact is that a majority of the buyers are youth people yeah, under absolutely. 35 years old. So you would have thought maybe that, okay, Nokia mm. exited at first, so maybe it's lost the cool factor, but not it so much. Millennials are buying. It hasn't. In so terms millennials of market share buying. as well, I mean, because, because, you know, the Samsung, <coughs> if not Samsung, then OnePlus and Xiaomi's of the world, the low-cost phones of the world, are taking over to an extent. And, and you know, I want to understand how that has changed the brand pop proposition over here. It's, I think, strengthened the brand proposition because it it's catering mm. to, like I said, a lot of the youth. Hmm. Um, not just here, hmm. but also around the world. Hmm. Uh, our brand, according to brand finance, now is the hmm. 188th, hmm. I think, most uh, powerful hmm. brand in the world. A year prior to that, it was some 350. Hmm. A couple of years prior, it wasn't even in the top yeah. 500, so it's, it it's back. Yeah. And of course, it helps so us the in the market share is market. going to grow now. And that, of course, for will sure. lead to, given the licensing revenue that you get, that is going to contribute. Because to for revenues. us, our role is that hmm. we license our brand exactly. and we get uh, royalty for both the brand as well mm. as the intellectual property. Exactly. And of course we exactly. work closely with them because it's mm. our brand mm. and in terms of user experience and, and mm. devices and, and so on. I'm very pleased with HMD's first year mm. and you know a lot more good is yet mm. to come. And India is going to be an important market Absolutely. from a consumer perspective Absolutely. as well? So this year it's okay. about scaling globally mm. and, and doing more okay. and going deeper. In any internal any incubation. interesting, since you spoke about startup, any interesting startup acquisition opportunities over here? Uh, over here? No, they might be. I, mm. I, mean, I think you know mm. there are various areas here that that mm. are booming. So if there are places for us to to acquire companies in the area of Internet of Things, mm. 
in the area of uh, automation of industries, yeah. we might look at it. We do it all the time. I mean, I think last year we bought a handful of Globally companies have. we have. Yeah, and so potentially okay. here as well. And we'll find new clients here, hmm. like, like web scale players and, okay. and enterprises that we continue to do. Okay, fair enough. Uh, a very quick uh, segment. Uh, so b we're going to do a quick rapid fire round. So the rules essentially are the first thing that comes to your mind. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's try it. Okay, okay let's start. Um, uh, since 2014 till now, the one big lesson that you have learned as the CEO of uh, Nokia? Continue to transform. Okay. Uh, the one value that you have uh, taken from uh, mentors, from teachers, from leaders, which you inculcate into your life? Humility. Okay. Uh, one uh, tech visionary that uh, you look up to or you would want to be? I like uh, Jeff Bezos. I think Amazon okay. have done some wonderful things in terms of uh, innovation. Okay. Your favorite Indian food? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> wow. Uh, You're from Delhi. I, I'm sure you love food. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, okay. Kebab. Kebab. I like kebab. Okay. Yeah. How do you balance uh, holidays and, and, and work? How do you balance your personal life and work? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a gym enthusiast, so I, okay. I, that keeps me happy and sane. Okay. So even in travels like these, I'll... Mm -hmm three to four times a week. Oh, really? So I, uh, I like to go to the gym. Okay. Uh, it, uh, so fitness is a good part of my life. Um, I, I family? Like, how, I like to spend time with family. Yeah, we, 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 we take a couple of holidays a year, hmm. and then we spend family time, and then I'll block hmm. only certain time in the day for emails. So I'm not working constantly okay. while on holidays, so I'm okay. disciplined about that. Hmm. And I think we consciously try to create a work-life balance where we have enough family hmm. time as well okay. as enough travel time. Of course, I travel a lot. So, so your favorite travel destination? London's my favorite city okay. uh, in the world. Okay. Um, so I like being in London. What time in the morning do you wake up? Uh, about six. About six? But I like to get my sleep. So yeah. seven hours is good, eight hours is wonderful, Lovely. six hours okay. is not, not nice at all. Not nice at all. Uh, you need to have your good <laughs> cognitive thinking. So sleep is hmm. important. Okay. And uh, lastly, uh, one thing that uh, you think uh, entrepreneurs today need to um, you need to remember before starting up? Uh, build a long-term culture. Long-term culture. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Rajiv, thank you so much for speaking to us. And it was a pleasure to talk to you. And good luck uh, for your India journey. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Great to talk Thanks to you as well. Rajiv.